Hello, this is Dr. Armand again, bringing you another exciting lecture uh, for the General Chemistry One Laboratories. Today I'll be, or not today, but in this lecture I'll be showing you the how to graph the data that you produce from the Excel lab in Excel. So what type of graph you will need, how do you label axes, and also how do you do linear regression in Excel. For those students who may not be familiar with Excel, this is a good video to watch. Now this is for Excel. If you have Excel-like programs, you may have to investigate more or contact uh, the Tech Cafe for more information. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So what we have here is some mock data that I've put, similar to what you'll be doing with the uh, Excel lab. So in the Excel lab, the overall goal is you take a solution, and from the solution, you, from the different solutions, you're going to calculate the different densities of those solutions. So I've just, uh, in this Excel uh, document, I just made up some solutions and some densities. So you'll do the Excel lab using the virtual lab, vlab.exe. You'll create different percent volume volume solutions you'll measure the densities and you'll put those in a table and those that, those are the values that you're going to graph so here we have our volume volume percents and our densities we want to graph this data so what we're going to do and and again there are many different ways you can move about excel if you do it a different way but you come with the same results no worries that's fine but for those students who maybe need a little bit of guidance, this is the way I would go about graphing data. So what I would do is I'm going to select the two columns. Then I'm going to go up here to insert. I'm going to insert a chart. Now you click here, you drop, drop down menu. You want to insert the XY scatter plot. So this first graph here in the top left corner, you want to insert this one. So this one does not connect the lines when you're plotting. Uh, density versus volume volume percent so we're going to click on that and now you see that it's plotted the data we have our y-axis which is the density we have our x-axis which is the percent volume volume percent so we need to do a few things on this before we can call it a acceptable chart so we're going to go up here where it says add chart elements Double uh, click on it, the drop down menu. We're going to add axis title. So we're going to start with the primary horizontal title. And this, for example, the title would be percent volume volume of a sodium chloride of or sodium chloride solution. Not of. Now, if this was something that had units, you would put the units in parentheses after it let me correctly spell solution there you go and we hit enter and now you'll see that the uh, x-axis has become percent volume volume of sodium chloride solution now we go back up to chart elements we select axis titles again we go to primary vertical and here is the density axis so we're going to do density and density's units are grams Per milliliter and so it's very important that when you put axes you put the units associated with those axes as well so we hit enter and now we have that the next thing we want to do is add the chart title so we come down here we go to chart title and we'll put above the chart and the chart title should be the y-axis versus the x-axis so density versus percent volume volume sodium chloride solution and then below that you should put your name the name your name Next, we want to make sure, so you see the y-axis, the significant figures there, not very good, because you notice in our densities, we have three significant figures in every answer. So we want to change the significant figures 
for this, so we go add chart element. I believe it's axes, more axes options. Oh, it's actually over here where it says format axis. We scroll down, we go down here to number. So on the, where it says format axis, we have the number. And instead of general, we're going to put number format. And now we can set the decimal places to, and since this is the X axis, I'm going to set it to zero. So now you notice the X axis have zero decimal places. Now if we click on the Y axis and we go to format, okay, so we right click, we, we select the Y axis, we right, right click on it, we go to format axis, we scroll down again to the number, we select the category to be number, and here we have two decimal places. So now if we close that, you see now it has three significant figures or two decimal places here. Now sometimes you may want to put the graph on a new page. So what you can do is if you right click, move chart, new sheet, it makes it easier to visualize. You don't have to do this, but I like doing it. So we've graphed the data. We've labeled the axes with the correct units. We labeled the chart title. We made the X and Y axis with relatively uh, similar significant figures to the data. The last thing we want to do is linear regression, and this is important. So what we want to do is you take any data point, you put your cursor over it and right click, and you're going to scroll down to add trend line. So again, what you do is you take your data point, you take your cursor, put it over a data point, right click, you're going to go to add trend line. So now it puts this dash blue line across the graph because it's trying to fit a straight line to the data that you plotted. This is why it's called linear regression. It's trying to fit a linear line. Now they have many different options for uh, uh, trend line analysis, but we mainly use linear regression in general chemistry one. Now in addition to having linear selected, if you scroll down, you want to make sure also that the display equation on chart is selected and display the R squared value as well. Now do not set the intercept to zero. Again, I repeat, do not set the intercept to zero. Do not check that box. Only check display equation on chart, display R squared value on chart. And now let's just click, drag this over here. And the last thing we want to do is format the trend line label. So again, for category, we want number, and we want to set it to five decimal places. And then with text op options, let's see if we can find it. That won't let us. Label options, maybe. OK. So now you see that the trend line equation, the linear regression equation, now each thing, everything has five decimal places associated to it. So again, you right click, you say format trend line, or format trend line label. You go to category, select number, selected the five decimal places, and then now the slope and y intercept have five decimal places. The last thing you may want to do is increase the font size. So we select everything in the linear regression box here. And you'll see sometimes you can do it from here. So you would select drop down, say 12 font. It makes it bigger, 14 font. You can do it that way, or you can select what's inside the linear regression box, go to home. And from home, you can change the font size as well. And so this is what you're gonna do in the Excel lab assignment, on two questions, I provide you data, and you need to graph them, and it gives you the options that you need to have for that graph. 
The third graph is going to be something similar to this, where you're going to plot density versus percent volume, volume, sodium chloride solution using gen data generated from the virtual vlab.exe. Now, one last thing I want to kind of talk about is what does this R squared mean? So in layman terms, R squared means how well the individual points fit a linear line. And this is a very uh, basic explanation of this. If you take some math classes or numerical analysis that may go more in depth, but just for a basic understanding so you can kind of uh, kind of give you some idea of how to explain or analyze your data. The closer this is to one, the better your data points fit a linear line. Now, if it's exactly one, that means that your data points definitely have a linear trend to it. Now, if it's a little bit off one, so like 0 0.99, 0 0.98, 0 0.97, even 0 0.96, that's still decent uh, data that has a linear characteristic to it. Now, if you plot this data and you get an R squared of, say, 0 0.7 or even 0 0.8, 0 0.6, that tells you that the data you've plotted doesn't have any kind of, uh, doesn't fit a linear line very well. So maybe it's not linearly related. Linear related means as you increase density, for example, you increase the percent solution. Or if you decrease density, you increase the percent solution. So it's a linear relationship, it has a slope to it. Now for density versus percent volume volume solution, this is something you should remember as you increase the percent volume volume solution, you're going to increase your density. There's a direct relationship between the two. Now once you do this, you're going to, after you graph, after you make the graph, Uh, right click and copy. So if you right click on the graph, so I can do it, copy it, and then you're going to paste it in a Word doc. And also be sure to include the table too. And then once you save this and then export it as a PDF and then upload the PDF to Blackboard. So you would copy this graph by right clicking let me see if I can get it. Nope. Let's see. There we go. Copy. Paste it into the Word doc. Also includes a table where you fill in the table with all the data. Save that. Export it as PDF. Upload the PDF to the Blackboard. The reason I strongly suggest PDF is because uh, in the past when you upload Word docs, it could mess up the formatting of your graph, causing you to, to lose points. So this was just a brief uh, lecture over how to plot your data, how to get the correct axes, axes labels, linear regression, so that you can be able to do this for the Excel lab assignment. Now, that's all I have for this lecture. If you enjoyed the lecture, make sure to hit the like button. Or if you uh, learned something new, also hit the like button as well. And until next time, this is Dr. Armand signing off.